You have to have a, a new bike every year, two bikes preferably, one to practice on, one to race. You get the suspension work done. You can spend you know, a couple hundred dollars for five gallons of race fuel. Tires every week. The entry fees, you know, it's $250, $300 every national. The fuel to get there. We're sitting in an Airbnb right now that I rented for the week out here in California. Uh, Jeff drove the van across the country. Me flying out here, flying back, it adds up unbelievably. It's just hard to get right out of a van, you know, sitting for three days straight pretty much and going straight out into qualifying practice where you have to set as fast of a lap time as you possibly can and your body is tight, back and legs are sore. So yeah, there's a lot of adversity being a privateer for sure. Tell me how much cost it goes into somebody like Forrest Butler the Rocky Mountain ATV team, to have somebody like Justin along. Yet, he was a fill-in rider for Benny Bloss. Now they're trying to decide, can we keep him on or not? You have to pay for new mechanic, four or five grand a month, fly the mechanics around, go get the hotels, and then you gotta do that for a rider. Your raw cost is 50, 60, $70,000. And that's what the rider not even making a salary. That's just raw cost to just go put the bike on the track. You sacrifice a lot, and then all it takes is one injury to completely set you back. So it's brutal from a financial point of view, a physical point of view, and an emotional point of view. There's no other sport like it. You, Benny, Colt, like you guys all have the same turning skill and ability that you guys have to trust to turn. You guys set it in there and you stick the leg out. You're not doing that. I want to talk about your current situation. You're a fill-in rider right now. That's awesome and that sucks at the same time. So yeah, I don't really know for sure what my future holds after Colorado. I'm in this position with an incredible team. I'm extremely grateful, but I also need to secure myself a ride for the rest of the season, but also next year, you know? So I'm grateful for my position, but also understanding that I need to get more. Gates on the ground, here we go. Stampede into turn number one. It's gonna be Zach Osborne. Well, here they come. Vogel will have to come under attack from Eli Tomac. Vogel holds the inside. Tomac trying to take the long way around, and he makes the pass. Eli Tomac up and around Vogel. The same pattern from Supercross that's going on right now is crush the start, and then the first guy that passes you, you just let everybody go past. But you just gave up all that real estate, like you're catching a fish, you know? Just keep the line tight from the beginning. It's racing, it's business, there's all that, but as of right now, yeah, when Benny comes back next week, we're gonna go all three guys for the remaining nine rounds, and if it wasn't for Justin's will and want to stay because of how much he believes in the team and the bike, that's what's going to make it happen. It's hard to accept defeat, but again, defeat in our sport is, oh, you got seventh place, you suck. I wish it'd be more recognized. If you're in the top 10, God, man, you're top 10 in the world and the toughest, toughest sport in the world, you know? I don't honestly know how one person trains to be able to do those two 35-minute motos. If I work as hard as I can, in the gym five days a week, on the bike, doing 30, 40 minute motos. I still show up on pro race day and I'm lucky to make it 10, 15 minutes. After a day you don't do so well, like Colorado, you got sixth there, seventh? Yeah, I, I don't even keep track if you're not on the podium. It's just a bad day. <laughs> What does it feel like to lose? I mean, the feeling of like getting passed by somebody that you know you're better than them. It's just that feeling of like, why? Like, what did I do? What did I do? What did I not do? Your, your mind just like, is just like a blender. We've not only just fallen in love with the fact that we have a facility here, but we've fallen in love with Florida. 
this lifestyle here is so much more peaceful and slow paced and we can just enjoy our lives here. I think we'll keep it for our kids' sake as long as we can. Win, lose, or whatever on the weekend, look what you get to do during the week, look what you have. This is a, a dreamland for anyone that loves motorcycles. It's one of those things where you can get away from the bad, but even though you're getting away from it, you're still working on what was bad. I'm doing it so that I can win races. That's the goal is to just try and try and win. And when you're not winning, you just keep going in that toolbox and you just keep trying to figure it out. Blake back into the number four. He's gonna leave it into turn one and nail down the motorsport.com hole shot. Not for long. Where did Roxon come from? He's already in the number one spot. Second place rider has hit the deck bag. It was very aggressive to try to hold off Anderson, but it has come undone. I think he just wants to have a premier class championship under his belt one way or another. And I'm not sure if he feels like he's getting there. Bag it able to hold the lead. Here comes Roxon, the German rider on the Honda. Finish speed from Roxon, the two-time champion. Ooh, big outside line run by Webb, and he uses it to get around Baggett. And what they see on TV is who won and how easy was it for them. And Blake's one of those guys who does have a reputation for being inconsistent on the weekends. So he gets disappointed in himself and he'll put himself through hell if he doesn't feel like he put in the right amount of work to get where he wanted to be. The majority of people in this sport that are the top athletes are that way. They're not okay with where they are whatsoever. For me, it's, it's just really my throttle hand is just not good. It's just like, man, couldn't hold on, or, you know, my hand's just sore, my hand's weak. You know, like I tell the team, but I try not to tell anybody else. You say the same thing over and over. It's like the kid that cried wolf too many times. So in a sense for me, it's just like, I'm just better off just, dude, I got beat today, you know? Just, that's all I had. Oh gosh, I fear the day that our child asks if he can race motorcycles because as amazing as it is, it is dangerous and it is emotionally draining and financially draining, but it is incredible too. So I don't ever want Blake to feel that pressure that he can't perform at a risky pace because he has to worry about me or the fact that he is gonna be a dad. I've always wanted to have kids during the racing portion of our lives because I want them to see and appreciate what their dad's done and accomplished. And for the outsider, you know, Blake won a championship on light spikes and since then, he's had some pretty amazing moments, but I see so much more in Blake than I think just the regular fan or person that watches on TV sees. And I want our kids to see that and experience that even if it's for a year or two of their lives. Blake Baggett is gonna grab the lead on the number four. Blake Baggett wins the first moto at high point. I love the sport. I mean, as much as it can be exhausting, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm just not that smart of a person, you know? You get beat down, you get kicked, and you just get right back up when you should just lay there and play dead. <laughs> but you don't. You get right back up, you're like, yeah, just hit me again, you know? That's what's wrong with us. The normal person would just be like, forget it. Why? But us, not that way. <laughs> That's what's wrong. That's why right now I'm done with this interview. I'm gonna go out and burn some diesel in my tractor. You're telling me you're done with the interview? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
fortunate to have the backing of my family and everything behind me. And that's something that weighs on my conscience a lot because I know all the money that he's putting into it. And it's one of the reasons why when I went to college, I told them I was done. And then once it came time to race again, he was like, so, you know, are you racing? And I was like, well, I don't want to put that on you guys. And he's like, well, if you're not racing, you know, I'm going to go sponsor the kid down the street because I want to go racing. So that definitely takes a little bit of the guilt off me knowing that he loves it so much, like just as much, if not more than I do. I enjoy doing it because, you know, my work is pretty stressful. And so when I'm not at work, this is my hobby. This is my escape. And my closest friends are still motocross related. I follow the sport religiously. Once it gets in your bloodstream, that's it. You're hooked for life. You know, you're hooked for life.